morning. My name is Randy Thompson. I'm an instructor at North Shore Technical Community College. This is one in a series of uh, videos we're producing to help uh, victims of the recent flood uh, do their own home repair and while they recover. Uh, today we're going to be talking about tile, uh, specifically ceramic tile, uh, flooring, and countertops and backsplashes. Uh, first, I'll go with over a few tools we'll be using today. Uh, this is a mixer. We'll be using to mix up our uh, grout and our uh, mortar. This isn't necessary. You can mix it with a stick, with your hand, whatever. But this just makes it easier, especially if you got a lot to do. Uh, when you're doing floor, these are neat pads. They're saving needs. That's well worth the, the price of them. Just get you a good pair. Don't buy a little cheap pair. This is a trial. We're going to do this by trial and error. This is a trial. We'll make our own errors later. Uh, this is a dry saw. Uh, you can use it for making small cuts uh, if you're doing flooring uh, around a uh, toilet flange or on a wall if you uh, cut, have to cut a piece out around a wall plug or something. Uh, of course a tape measure and a chalk line and sponges and stuff. We'll get to that later. Okay, first we're going to talk about laying it on a uh, floor pile. I'm going to tell you how you're supposed to do it and how I do it. Uh, the way you do it, you want to start in the center of your room. We're going to just pretend this is the floor. And you do that by chalk line. You measure it to the middle on each end, and pull that chalk line, and just pop it. And it leaves a blue line down there. And then you do it this way too. Pop this line for me. Okay, now you got your center point of your room. That's where you will start. Uh, if you lay the floor, This is a typical one by one floor tile. Uh, they come in all different shapes, sizes, well not shapes. Uh, a new thing is a wood textured floor tile. Uh, looks just like wood. Uh, they're a little bit longer. Uh, you can get them in 18 by 18. But this is typically what you would use. And you would lay your, put your mortar down on that first little corner there and lay that piece first, and then you would work off of it. Uh, now on your floor, on your, if you're moving old floor, if you got cement floor, you want to clean it as, as good as you can. If you have a wood floor, it's a good idea to lay uh, cement back and forth, uh, and it just comes in like three by five sheets, and it's cement boards. And that way you don't, your wood floor don't give if it's an older house. You need a good foundation so the tile will not cry. Uh, and when you lay the tile, when you get your tile, you want to get enough the first time and you ought, want to make sure it's all the same lot number. It'll be the same style. Uh, it's same pattern and everything, but if it's a different lot number, it can be just a shade off a little bit different. Okay, now I told you this is the way you're supposed to do it so your floor is centered. So your grout lines are centered in the room. Now, what I don't like about that, when you come from the center and you get to this wall, you're going to have to cut those pieces because it's not going to come out exactly even. And then when you come to this side, same thing. You're going to have to cut that piece. So to do less cutting, what I do, 
I take my tape measure, and if I'm using one foot tall, I come out a foot from my long, my longest wall. Uh, actually, come out uh, a foot and in like three eighths of an inch, because you don't want to go up against the wall. For when it, the temperature changes, the floor uh, expands and contracts. It won't crack. So I pop my line like say a foot from that wall. So that's one wall I don't have to cut. Uh, and that's just just my way of doing it. So I don't have to do as many cuts. Okay. Uh, so and it's a good thing if you're doing the floor, you can go and, and lay a row out before you mortar it in just to see how it's going to look, how it's going to lay out. This is a wet saw, a tile saw. Uh, you can rid these if you if you got just a little bit of work to do. You can rid these. Uh, you can buy them for about two hundred dollars. Uh, not as nice as this one. This one's about seven hundred dollars. But if you're doing your whole house, you might be better off to. Uh, just buy one of the little $200 ones. Uh, I built this stand. Uh, normally this will just sit on the floor. Uh, you can buy them wet stands and all, but normally you would do it on the floor. Uh, this has a, uh, you pour your water in here. When you see when I it's got water jet. That's keeping keep your blade wet and cool. Uh, that dry saw we looked at a while ago, uh, you couldn't use it all day uh, like you do this. It would, the blade would wear out quicker because it gets hot quicker. Uh, when you cut it, you want to measure. There's a rule on, on here. Uh, or you can just measure it and mark it with a pen. You want to push it up against your gate here. To keep it square. If you don't keep it square, it's not going to cut straight. Uh, and then you just want to ease it through the saw. And then when you get to the end, you want to shut it off before you pull it back out. I'll cut a piece and show you. Uh, this will be for countertops, 
uh, if you do them flooring, uh, if you put back the board or something over the floor, when you get to the edge of that room, uh, it's going to be a little bit higher, so you would want to cut a little bit like that. Now, also, when we get to this, I'm going to show you some other things. This is probably the cheapest way to do it uh, for your corners. You can also This is called a bull nose. It's a corner. They make several different styles. Uh, this way. Uh, you can use those, or you can cut it and mire it like this for your corners. Or you can simply lay your piece here. And let this hang over here and grab that edge, and that looks fine too. Now that's just your preference. Your preference. Uh, these can get kind of expensive if you got a lot. Of course, they're a lot nicer. Uh, whereas if, if you start with modern, you see that's a pretty sharp edge if you were to fall and hit your head on it or something. Okay, now we're going to mix up some mortar. Uh, I always pour my water in first, and the reason I do that, when you if you pour your mortar in dry, and then you pour your water, you're going to end up having some of it caked around with corns. And it just works better if you put the water in first. And you want this about the consistency of pancake batter. And it's real hard to mix up just a little bit so it may pack up. So I drill mixture here. See the teeth in this one is a lot smaller, it's like 3 sixteenths of an inch. This is uh, I think an eighth inch, maybe a quarter inch. This would be for laying your floor top. This would be for counter tops. So you got your water mixed up. Uh, you can do it any way you want. You can just pour some straight out of the bucket. I like using the putty knife to, to dip it out. You try at an angle like that. You don't hold it flat. Hold it at an angle. And 
just move it around. If you want to pick up a little mark, you hold it flat like that, kind of dip it, it sticks to the thing, and then you move it over, over here. Now, when you get it spread out good, you want all your ridges going the same way. Thank 
so it needs to be just a little bit wide. Now when you mix your ground up, you don't want to mix any more than you can use in, in probably 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, after that, it, you can use it, it's just a little bit harder to handle. Now after 
just drive for 24 hours, you're ready to grind it in. Uh, you mix the grout up the same way as you did the water. Now the grout comes in several different colors. Uh, you just have to decide what color you want to match. Most places will tell you this color tile looks best with a certain color grout. Me, I let my wife make those decisions. Same as with the, the mark, you want to mix up no more than you're going to use in about 45 minutes. Now this is a, a grab trial. You see it's smooth, it doesn't have the edges on it. You just want to wipe it off with this. Now you don't want to, you want to go diagonal. If you go straight, when you hit that corner, I mean that grab line, it's going to sink down and you're going to knock more out than you put in. So you want to go back. Doesn't matter which way you go, just so it's bad. And you want to scrape it off as much as you can. Now if we had more tile, we would just push this to the next grout line. Alright, after you do 
do uh, what you can do in about an hour, or you can actually do the whole floor if it's a, a fairly small room. You got to clean this up so you get a sponge. And you just light the light. Okay, get it all off the, off the tops. When you wipe it, if you see a, a place that uh, maybe has an air bubble in, in the ground line, uh, you can just do a little bit with your finger and just put it in it or just wipe it out with your finger. Okay, now after you have that white, uh, you're going to let it sit for 24 hours. Now when this dry, this is going to have a little hazy glaze on it. So you got to come back and re-wipe it again. They make a, a, a glaze cleaner. You can mix with water and do it. Uh, you can use just uh, vinegar and water or just straight water. And you may want to have to do that twice, you know, till you get all the hazy glaze off. Uh, do it and then let it dry and then do it again. And after this sits for 24 hours and this grout is dry, you have to seal the grout. Uh, there's different kinds. You, you put it on with a paintbrush. Uh, they got in spray can. You can spray it over the grout lines. And that seals it because this grout is porous. If you uh, if you spill something on it, the grout will stain if you do not seal it. Uh, so you want to be sure and seal it. Uh, and also the grout, we mixed it up. Uh, you can get it in a caulking tube if you want. I don't find that's any better. It's more expensive. Uh, so. And the, the mortar, instead of the cement mortar that they used for a hundred years or ever how long they've been doing it, you can get an adhesive, a glue type of adhesive. Uh, it's a little bit harder to clean up, uh, so that's why I like the mortar best. Uh, backsplash, you would do it the same way. Alright, I think that's about it. I think I covered everything. I hope I didn't forget. If you do have any questions, uh, you can uh, check our website at northshorecollege.edu. We do have these classes if you want some hands-on experience. Uh, most people in my classes, they have watched this sort of stuff on YouTube. And, and, but seeing it and actually doing it are two different things. Uh, I have people that never worked a saw. Uh, they scared to death of the saw. But once they do it one time, they say, oh, this is easy. Same with the top. You know, they're scared to death. They're going to mess something up or, or just not know how to do it. But once they get their hands in it and feel the texture of the, the mortar and grout and stuff, they say, oh, this is going to be easy. I can do this. All right, well, that's it. Thank you all. And sign up on our website if you want to take the course in person.